good evening students so good evening all of you so welcome to an academy amset youtube channel so once again good evening all of you so an academy is providing amset youtube classes every day at 4 pm you have biology class so apart from the amset youtube classes on an academy amset youtube channel so on an academy's app on an academy app also we are having special live classes we are having the plus classes in today's class on our youtube channel so we will be discussing about the lesson that is cell the unit of life so you are going to discuss about this lesson that is the cell the unit of life in this particular class we will be discussing about the cell the unit of life so that is the lesson which we are going to discuss in today's class so before starting this lesson so i would like to introduce about myself so if you see the qualifications so myself so myself the this is the picture showing myself and myself that is dr rajendra prasad so the myself is dr rajendra prasad lawyer pali so i have completed phd life sciences so i have already qualified the ugc net that is ugc net in the subject that is life sciences in biological sciences and i have 13 years experience in teaching so i have been teaching biology to need medical aspirants i have been teaching biology to need medical aspirants i have been taking classes for need ug people at the same time i have already previously given teaching for apmt aims jipma kset and as well as amser students so so already worked with and working with the uh, renowned institutes like sri chaitanya and narayana so already mentored mentored several thousands of students from last 13 years to achieve their goal as a medicos so so this is about myself this is about my qualification so once again so good evening anusha so welcome to an academy amset youtube channel so good evening so before starting the class so i would like to introduce about our an academy amset comprehensive batch so there is a comprehensive batch that is started in the month of september so in this comprehensive batch so what happens in this comprehensive batch is we will be completing the syllabus for intermediate first year second year by end of the february month and in this uh, lectures which are myself teach take will be taking the biology class and sir will be taking the physics classes and sir will be taking this sir will be taking the chemistry classes and what is the importance of this particular batch if you see what is the importance of this particular batch is a complete syllabus will be covered tips and tricks will be given by the top educators and topic wise practice papers so topic wise practice papers also will be uh, covered then a full length mock test a full length mock test also will be given and this all together you can get for a one month plan of about 2250 rupees and this offer is valid up to only today after that the price may also increase students so if you are interested you can use my code if you use my code rajendra live you can get the particular uh, course you can get the course for this particular amount so next so let us see about the an academy plus subscription so let us see about our an academy plus subscription so if you see the an academy plus subscription so an academy apart from one month plans an academy is also providing apart from one, one month plan an academy is also providing if you see apart from one month plan So an academy is providing the six months plan as well as twelve months plan. So an academy is also providing the long term. So long term plans. So an academy is also providing long term plans. So six months plans. In that six months plan is of about ten thousand one hundred twenty five rupees. Six months plan is of about ten thousand one hundred twenty five rupees. And twelve months plan. So twelve months plan is of about twelve thousand three hundred seventy five rupees. So it is the best plan. I suggest the students to take this particular plan so that you can have a complete preparation. Throughout the year, without any interruption, students. So, and you can it will be only just one thousand. It is one thousand thirty one rupees per month. So it is a very costing very less amount. So if you are interested, you can use my code Rajendra Life so that you can get the course for twelve thousand three hundred seventy five rupees. So what is importance of this plus subscription? So what is importance of this plus subscription is 
A premium content, so premium content will be available, so premium content will be available at affordable price. Then a structured live process, a structured live process and a dedicated doubt cleaning session. So structured live process, so structured live course is a designed, designed course is given. So the 11th class and 12th class syllabus, so the 11th class and 12th class syllabus will be completed in a specific time. And after every three theory classes, the fourth class will be a doubt cleaning session. So like that, a dedicated doubt cleaning session is also available and quizzes are conducted at regular intervals and batches. So batches also batch by complete preparation. So batch course will be started by different different educators. They form a batches. And if you are interested in particular educators batch, you can join those batches and test series. So test series also uh, will be so test series also will be kind of provided and full length mocks a full length mock test and analysis also kind of. so these all you can get for a single subscription at unlimited analysis so so that is about our anatomy plus subscription students so i'll be taking we will start our lesson so we'll continue with our lesson that is the sell the unit of life so once again so good afternoon students once again so anusha so so you got one for six marks in MSET. I think uh, that is a qualifying mark, but rank will might may vary, but it is a qualifying mark, no doubt about it. So sometimes qualifying mark, 23 marks is sometimes a qualifying mark in MSET. So 46 can be a qualifying mark in MSET. Okay, so it's not a problem. So anyway, let us continue with our topic that is sell the unit of life. So this sell the unit of life, the name of the topic today we are going to discuss is the sell the unit of life. So cytology so let us see about the branches so the the branch that is associated with the study of the cell actually so that is called as a cytology so what is a cytology the term itself is telling cyto cyto means cell the term cyto so cyto means cell the term cyto means cell ology means study so st study of the cell is called as a cytology so no doubt cytology is a branch of biology no doubt cytology is a branch of biology and it deals with is a branch of biology that deals with the study of the forms so forms of the cell means inside the cell what are the different forms are present what are the cell organs are present and how these cell organs are changing and from one form to another form how they got modified inside the protoplasm so inside the cell we have cytoplasm in a well developed cell it is called as a cytoplasm but in an immature cell that is called as a protoplasm means the an immature cell is converted into a mature cell. What happens is protoplasm is modified into a cytoplasm. So protoplasm is now called as a cytoplasm, which is modified. So like the dif different uh, change in the forms and as well as structures of the cell. So inside the cell, we have different types of cells. So when cell is in an immature, when a cell is in an immature cell or cell is in a young cell. So immature cell means here it is a young cell. When cell is in an immature or in a young cell, what happens? These particular cell organelles, cell organelles are different cells, they don't have any specific shape. When cell becomes mature or cell becomes well developed, then it will have a specific structures. So like that, so the cytology, so what happens in, what is going to study in this particular cytology, it is no doubt branch of biology that deals with study of forms, means changes, the changes that is taking place inside the cell and also changes in the structures. So every cell has its own function and they have their own size, they have own shape. So these all shapes, so these different different shapes of the cell is observed only in a mature cell or in a well developed cell. Whereas in immature cell, the cell don't have any specific shape. All cells appear in a similar manner in an immature cell. So like that what happens is, it studies the branch of biology cytology deals with the study of the forms and as well as structure of the cell. So now at present, so cytology has been, at present cytology has been replaced by the cell biology at present what happens is cytology is replaced by cell biology so cytology has been replaced by the cell biology at present so father of who is considered as father of the cytology so robert hook is the father of the cytology so robert hook is considered as a father of the cytology because why he is considered as father of biology is father of cytology is because he has extensively studied so he is a person who has extensively studied So he is a person who has extensively studied about the cell, no doubt about it, he is a person who has extensively studied about the cell, that is Robert Hooke. 
so what he has studied so he has discovered the cell so cell was discovered so cell was so cell was first discovered by the robert hook okay so first time so discovery of cell so discovery of cell we see the importance so discovery of cell so this cell was first discovered by the robert hook so he has discovered the cell no doubt about it he has discovered so he has discovered the cell no doubt he has first discovered the cell he has this discovery is related to a dead cell so he has discovered in a dead cell so he has discovered the cell in a dead cells in a dead cells he has discovered the cell so what are the dead cells he has discovered is he has discovered in the cork so cork cells no doubt cork cells are the dead cells they are the dead cells cork cells are no doubt they are the dead cells so the cell was first discovered so cell was first discovered by the robert hook so how the cell was discovered by robert hook he has used his own tools so what is his own tools so these are the tools which has used he has his own microscope so if you can see this is the structure of the microscope he has used at the time that microscope is prepared by himself by his own so he has used the lenses he has seen if you see here in ip so in ip he has used his own lens those are called as a crude lenses he has used the lenses those are called as a crude lenses he has prepared similarly you will be have here another lens he has kept so you can see the holder of the specimen holder so he has prepared his own crude lenses and he has arranged his own he has designed he has designed his own microscope so that is the this is the picture showing the microscope that was developed by the hook in the 1600s so in 1670 so the microscope of hook microscope was shown here is in 1670 so at that time itself the microscope is prepared by himself so that is his own microscope so with his microscope he has discovered the cell and that the cell he has discovered is a dead cell he has extensively studied in the cork cells so because of his extensive studies on these particular cells he is considered as a father of the cytology so robert hook has discovered no doubt in multiple choice question they ask you so robert hook discovery is related to cell no doubt about he discovered the cell in a dead cell but the living cell so living cell was first discovered by the leven hock so if you see the so another scientist that is called as a leven hock so leven hock is a person who has discovered cell he also discovered cell in a living cell so living cell so living cell was first discovered by the anton von leven hock actually anton von leven hock is a person who has discovered the living cell so living cell was given by the discovered by the anton von leven hock so from which type of cells so he has identified the living cells from the stored so he has identified the living cells from stored rain water then from this come of the teeth so living hawk is a person who has no doubt he has discovered the living cells so living cells was discovered by living hawk that is important thing which you have remember here so from where he has discovered his discovery is totally related to the stored rain water he has discovered in the stored rain water and he has discovered the stored by rain water and also in this come of the teeth and he named them as he in his so when he observed so when leven hawk observed the living cells in the stored rain water and scum of the teeth he find that cells are moving so he find that cells are moving so when he observed that cells are moving so he named that as he named them as animal cells so he named them as animal cells so those he named as a animal cues actually so 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 once again if you clearly see that so this is related to discovery of cells so dead cell dead cell was first discovered so dead cell was first discovered by the robert hook and living cell was first discovered by the anton von leven hock so leven hock is a person so who has discovered the living cell so living cell was discovered so living cell was discovered in the stored rain water and scum of the teeth and he told that these cells are when he observed under his own microscope leven hock he found that cells are moving and these moving cells are he named it as a animal cues so he named these moving cells as a animal cues so let us see about another branch so nowadays we were discussing same thing nowadays this cytology is called as cell biology 
So let us discuss about cell biology. So what is cell biology? It is a branch of biology. No doubt it is a it is also a branch of biology. No doubt cell biology is also a branch of biology. So it's a branch of biology that deals with the study of structure. So study of structure, it deals with the study of structure, physiology, study of structure, physiology, biochemistry, reproduction, genetics and evolution of the cell. So this is the advanced actually. So the study of cell is now placed under the cell biology. So why it is placed under cell biology? Because cell biology involves all the techniques. So all the techniques related to the physiology, the techniques related to the biochemistry, techniques related to the reproduction, so techniques related to the genetics, so evolution of cell. So cell is connected. Actually the cell is connected to all the aspects of different branches. Even the physiology is separate branch, biochemistry is separate branch, so reproduction part is separate branch, genetics is placed in a separate branch and evolution is also a separate branch. But all, all these all these are also associated with the cell. So all together. So all aspects of the cell is studied. So all aspects with respect to physiology of the cell, with respect to the biochemistry of the cell, reproduction of the cell, genetics of the cell, evolutionary aspects of the cell. So that is the reason. So now it is the study of the cell is placed under cell biology. So cell biology involves it is a branch of biology, no doubt. It is a branch of biology that deals with study of structural physiology, no doubt about the structure and its physiology biochemistry, reproduction, genetics and as well as evolution of the cell. So, so modern, so modern studies, so modern studies involves the cell biology, no doubt, modern studies on the cell, so modern studies on the cell involves the cell biology. So extensively, so Swanson is the person who has extensively studied on the cell using the modern application techniques. So that is the reason he is considered as a father of cell biology, so, so father of cell biology is Swanson. Swanson is a scientist who is considered as a father of the cell biology. So what happened here is, so this cell biology, so cell biology deals with the physiological aspects of the cell, so the biochemical aspects. Biochemical aspects means like what type of proteins are present, what type of amino acids are present, what type of carbohydrates are present in the cell, what type of lipids are present and similarly reproduction. So what cell is undergoing, what type of reproduction is it? able to how how the changes taking place during asexual reproduction how the cell changes takes place during sexual reproduction and genetics of the cell so inside the cell we have the chromosomes the behavior of the chromosomes studying is called as the genetics so evolutionary aspects how the prokaryotic the eukaryotic cell is formed from the prokaryotic cell so like this so these all together studies so all together studies are placed on the cell biology that is the reason so swanson has extensively studied about the cell biology so for his studies, he was given as a father of the uh, cell biology actually. So, so that is uh, about the branch or branches of the biology in the cell. So let us see. So cell, so once again, so cell is a structural and functional unit of living organism. So no doubt cell is a structural and functional unit of the living organism. So no doubt cell is a structural and functional unit. So, so no doubt cell is a structural and functional unit of the living organism. So single cell, so single cell, so cell is single cell, single cell is performing all. So why it is called structural and functional unit? Why? Because cell is performing, so performing all the, cell is performing all the metabolic activities, cell is functioning, performing all the So cell is performing all the metabolic activities as cell is performing all the metabolic activities. So it is considered as a structural and functional unit of the living organism. So, so for example, so this is a single cell. So this is a single cell. So this single cell, so like that, this single cell. So several cells, when several cells, so this is a cell, this is a single unit. When several cells together, so when several cells come together and attach. So, now what happened? This forms a tissue. Now, so in an organisms what happens? So, see cell is the unit. So, structural and functional unit, no doubt about it. So, why it is called structural and functional unit of living organism? Because 
all metabolic activities will be taking place inside the cell so cell performs all the metabolic activities that is the reason it is called as a each cell each cell performs all metabolic activities that is the reason it is called as structure and function unit of the living organism so several cells several cells so several cells you can see here several cells so when several cells associate with each other several cells associate with each other they form the tissue so then what happens then several tissues so several tissues so several tissues so this is one tissue it is an association with the another tissue so several tissues forms the organ so this is, it forms the organ so several organs again several organs together form the internal structure so it forms the internal structure it forms the internal structure of it can be of plant or it can be animal it can be animal so once again so what i want to tell you is so cell is a structural and functional unit of the living organism so how the cell is called as a structural and functional unit of living organism means all cells will perform cell will perform all the metabolic activities so cell will perform all the metabolic activities no doubt about it so that is the reason it is considered as a structural and functional unit of life so single cell is undergoing metabolic activities single cell is undergoing metabolic activities so when several cells merge together when several cells associate with each other they form one tissues and several tissues together forms one organ so when several cells together forms a tissue such type of organization is called as a such type of organization is called as a tissue grade organization such type of organization is called as a tissue grade organization such type of organization is called as a tissue grade organization so several cells together forms tissue the tissue is performing some specific function for example like parenchyma tissue cholangiyama tissue so sclerenchyma tissue so like that it is forming different types of tissue so if tissue is tissue is playing an important role then such type of organization is called as a tissue grade of organization for example if you see the members like poriferans so in porifera so in porifera what happens is in porifera members we have tissue grade of organization similarly you can see in ciliary traits also we have tissue grade of organization so like that so now what happens several several tissues together forms organs so organ grade organization you can see organ grade organization case of members like annelida so several tissues together forms a, a defined organs so like the such type of <coughs> such type of condition is called as a organ grade of organization such type of condition is called as a organ grade the such type of organization is called as a organ grade organization and several organs no doubt several organs forming the internal structure of the plant or animals in human body if you see several organs together forming the they are together present so heart lungs kidneys liver so these are all the different types of organs so like that cell is playing a very very important role so that is the reason why cell is considered as structural and functional unit of the living organism actually so these cells if you see the cells actually so if you see the different types of cells so cells can be unicellular so some cells can be unicellular no doubt about it some cells can be a, a multicellular so let us see about the uni, uh, unicellular cells so so what are these unicellular cells so the organism with only single cell the organism with only single cells so organism with only single cell such type of cells are called as a unicellular organism so you can see the best example of unicellular organisms are no doubt they are prokaryotes and as well as members like the protistans if you see the prokaryotes so prokaryotes are no doubt they are also they are unicellular so unicellular the unicellular if you see the protistans so protistans no doubt they are also unicellular but they are unicellular eukaryotes so they are unicellular eukaryotes so protistans are no doubt they are unicellular eukaryotes protistans are no doubt they are unicellular eukaryotes okay so so these similarly the protistans protistans are no doubt they are unicellular eukaryotes they are also called as a protistans are also called as a primitive so they are also called as a primitive eukaryotes so protistans are also called as a 
primitive eukaryotes they are also called as a primitive eukaryotes so the organism having only single cell that particular organism have only single cell and that single cell is performing all the metabolic activity such type of organisms are called as a unicellular so what is importance of this unicellular is there is one character feature here is so growth and reproduction in use in the organisms what happens is growth and reproduction takes place at the same time that is the important character feature of the unicellular organisms so growth and reproduction so in unicellular organisms what happens is growth and reproduction takes place at same time so growth and reproduction takes place at same time so growth and reproduction takes place at the same time in case of the unicellular organisms but if you see in case of multicellular organism growth takes place the growth is called as it growth can be a vegetative growth for example in plants the first formation of the leaves will be taking place green leaves will be taking place after few months or few years what happens the flowering is initiated when flowering is initiated on the plant that stage is from that uh, uh, that time it is called as a reproductive stage before flowering the plant will be showing a green leaves profuse branching will be taking place that is called as a vegetative growth so like that growth is different and reproduction phase is different in case of the higher plants but in case of unicellular organisms what happens is growth and reproduction takes place at the same time so that is important character feature generally asked in multiple choice questions so the important character feature of unicellular organisms is no doubt single cell performs all the metabolic activities this is the one of the important function apart from that what happens here is growth and reproduction takes place at the same time in case of the unicellular organism so there is some best example shown here so you can see the best example like paramecium so paramecium is having the if you see the structure of the paramecium this paramecium is having the macronucleus and it is having the micronucleus macronucleus and as well as micronucleus is present and you have a food vacuole so food vacuole is also present so so you have cilia so body is covered by cilia and you have contractile vacuole the contractile vacuole help in the process of osmoregulation contractile vacuole plays an important role in osmoregulation no doubt about it so so like that this particular organism so has it there have its own character features for its survival actually similarly if you see euglena so euglena so euglena is a mixotrope actually euglena is a mixotrope so it is it is why it is called mixotrope it also undergoes autotrophic nutrition it shows autotrophic nutrition it also shows heterotrophic nutrition it also exhibits autotrophic nutrition it also exhibits mixotrophic nutrition so what is important character feature of euglena is euglena is acting as a connective link between the plants and as well as animals so in euglena what happens there is it has chloroplast so due to presence of chloroplast during daytime it undergoes photosynthesis in the absence of light or in the night time it undergoes heterotrophic nutrition so during daytime due to presence of chloroplast it undergoes photosynthetic uh photosynthesis and it behaves as an autotroph during night time in the absence of light it is acting as a heterotroph so because of this what happens is mixotropic nutrition is present so in case of the euglena so in case of euglena you have the mixotropic nutrition then if you see amoeba so amoeba is no doubt it is also it is a it is one of the best example of unicellular organisms so amoeba is having the pseudopodia so pseudopodia is mainly for the movement of the organism pseudopodia for the purpose of the movement so it is also having the contractile vacuole to maintain osmoregulation so and it is having food vacuole so like that each the single cell of that particular organism the particular organism is made up of single cell and the single cell of the organism is involved in performing all the activities of the cell such type of organisms are called as a unicellular so similarly in case of multicellular so organism has many types of cells so like eukaryotes especially like plants and as well as animals so plants and animals are the best examples no doubt about it which are multicellular in nature so if you see the size of the cells so let us see about few things about the size of the cell if you see the size of the cell so there are different types of micro organisms are present we have virus so it, it is the it is the smallest actually so generally it is the smallest the size of the virus is measured in nanometers actually size of the virus is measured in the nanometers that is the first point we have to remember 
in multiple choice question they'll ask you the size of the virus is measured in which units the size of the virus is measured in nanometers generally size of the virus ranges between 20 nanometers it ranges between 20 nanometers to the 200 nanometers so it is the smallest particle actually virus is the very smallest one which we cannot see with our eye so to observe the virus no doubt we have to use electron microscope so we have to use electron microscope so no doubt virus is the smaller one no doubt about it it is measured in nanometer so we already know that so what is a nanometer so so one nanometer if you take the one nanometer is equal to 10 power 9 meters so such a very small small particle is virus which we cannot see with our naked eye so then how much is that particular virus size is about it size is 20 nanometers to 200 nanometers very very small it is the very smallest particle it is very very small size 20 nanometers to 200 nanometers it can be observed only through the electron microscope it cannot be seen with our naked eye so that is the size of the virus if you see the size of the virus the size of the virus is what it is measured in nanometers that is the important point you have to remember here and how much the size of the virus ranges between the size of the virus ranges between 220 nanometers to 200 nanometers so if it is tobacco mosaic virus there is one virus that is called as a tmb the tmb is nothing but it is called as a tobacco mosaic virus so if you see the size of the tobacco mosaic virus so tobacco mosaic mosaic virus so size of the tobacco mosaic virus it may range up to 300 nanometers so it is the largest virus actually. Tobacco mosaic virus is the largest virus. So it is the largest virus. Largest virus is tobacco mosaic virus. Then if you see the size of the bacteria. So in multiple choice question they'll ask you. Size of the bacteria is measured in. So what is how the size of the bacteria is measured in which unit? So then you have to clearly remember that the size of the bacteria is measured in micrometers. That is an important point which you have to remember students. In multiple choice question they ask you in this way what is the unit that is used to measure the bacteria that is micron meter so one micron so one micron is equal to 10 power minus 6 meters so one micron is equal to 10 power 6 minus, minus 6 meters so in multiple choice question they will question you like how the how much is the size of the bacteria is, it is size of the bacteria is how much then it is clear is 0.2 microns to 1 micron meter. This is the size of the bacteria. So general size of the bacteria and bacteria is measured in size in unit that is called as a micron meter. So the smallest one, the smallest microorganism is no doubt this is the virus actually. Virus is the smallest organism. Okay. But smallest living organism, then we have to take because virus is neither living or neither non-living because outside the host virus is acting as a non-living so inside the host it is living so because of the reason the smallest living organism is people will take answer as bacteria actually okay now so before that what should we have to remove the size of the cell if you see the size of the cell the cell of the virus the virus cell is all the smallest cell actually it is measured in unit the measured in unit is for nanometers and how much small it is is 20 nanometers to the 200 nanometers is the its size. Then, as it is very really small, we cannot see with our naked eye, so we have to use uh, electron microscope. So, then, largest virus, if you see the largest virus, it is the tobacco mosaic virus, is the largest virus, and it is of 300 nanometers. Then, what is size of the bacteria? How much is the size of the bacteria? So, size of the bacteria generally ranges between 0.2 microns to the 1 micron. General size it is actually. So the unit, the unit in which bacteria size is measured, then we have to clearly remember the unit is it is microns. The, mi the bacteria is measured in unit, the unit is called as a micron. So, so like that we have to remove, uh, remember actually. So next class we will discuss in detail about the size and shapes of the bacteria actually. Before that let us see, the cells also have great different in size and shape activities. So, just now we are discussing the smallest living cell. If you see the smallest living cell, it is mycoplasma. So, mycoplasma is the smallest living cell. So, if you see the size of the mycoplasma, how much is size of the mycoplasma? The size of the mycoplasma is generally 0 0.3 micron meters. So, size of the is generally 0 0.3 micron meters. Then, the bacteria size generally ranges between. So, generally it ranges between actually 
0 0.2 so 0 0.2 microns to the 1 micron meter and if you culture in the if you grow in the laboratory in the laboratory if you grow in the laboratory it appears as in the laboratory it takes more food material and appears as it increases its size up to 3 to 5 micron meters okay so you have to remember that so out of all this the nerve fiber is the longest is the longest cell is no doubt it is the nerve fiber you can see that this is the nerve cell and how the nerve cell appears nerve cell appears as a branched and long so nerve cell appears as a branched and long and it is the longest cell and if you see the size how much is size of the nerve cell it is a 90 meters so 90 meters is the size of the nerve cell actually then if is, there is another example estabularia so estabularia is a unicellular green algae so this green algae is also it is having a length of 10 centimeters so like this the shape of the different cells and it might vary and size of the different cells also will be varying so we'll be discussing about the size of the cells in detail in next class students so we will see next class so thank you for uh, attending the class so thank you students thank you anusha and uh, so see you next class